we are back with another cast brought to you by StarCast TV. We are now into the third match of the round of eight. It's Royal versus No. I think this is probably my most anticipated, anticipated match. Royal, he is on point these days. We know that he's won a recent ASL, but he's going up against the absolute master in PBT. Snow, he could not have gotten a better bracket. I think that this could be finally his breakout in a tournament, but Royal is so good. And also Royal beat Snow in ASL on the map Tempest. So this is gonna be a tough matchup for him despite him being so good at PBT. So let's get a look at how our round of eight has unfolded so far. We see here, we have Rush versus Soma, Best versus Beast, Royal versus Snow, and Light versus Mini. Terran versus Zerg in the top, Zerg versus Protoss in the top, so we basically have a Zerg lineup in the top side, but then we've got Terran in the bottom, facing off versus Protoss. And as I was mentioning, this is a great bracket for Snow because if Light makes it through, then he's got TVP again. If Rush somehow comes through the top, then he's got TVP in the finals. And Snow, well known for his great Reaver control. And we know Reaver is a common unit used in PVP. So I think that this is as good as it could possibly get. Uh, with all that said, let's just stick to our games today. I want to see what maps we're going to be going into. And here they are. We've got Standard Polypoid coming up first. Then we've got Jungle Story, Retro, Champion, and Luna as our final map so it looks like royal just wants to play standard I, I don't really mind that but you know i did recently watch some games of royal in pro league and if you guys have not seen him playing on la campanella for example he has like a 75 percent win rate on that map now i'm not sure if any of these maps in the map pool play like la campanella but you know if I could play a map like Jungle Story, where it seems like that could be a good map for drops and harass, I feel like that's more of a map for Royal. But Snow ended up being the one to pick that. So we'll see what both players have come up with in terms of strategy. Let's just get into game one. We've got Polypoid up first, and it's you know a very common map that these players have both played thousands of games on. Okay, in the top right, our green Terran, it is Mr. Royal, and in the top left, the one and only, it is Snow. Now Snow, everybody knows, very good Reaper control. I think even stating it as very good is an understatement. This guy can kill your entire army with a single shuttle and Reaper. And because of that, it's going to be quite hard for Royal to make stuff like timings work. We did see in earlier rounds, if I remember correctly, Sock versus No, and Sock actually had a really strong gasless play into 7-fact timing. It looked really solid, but after playing versus that, I'm sure Snow has come up with a build versus gasless uh, that he could shut down any moves like that. Royal is pretty known for going for gasless, so he may end up going for that, but I don't think he'll do a 7-fact timing. I think he'll probably play a little more normal. Also, Sock in that series rushed really damn fast, plus two. So we don't see any shenanigans so far. Did not see a forward pylon. And we do have an SCV going to the low ground. So this is going to be most likely gasless expand. It's, it's a Rax on the low ground, which we don't see that often these days, really. Generally, this was gasless, you know, a couple years ago when Circuit Breakers was in the map pool where people were connecting the command center to the racks with the depot so they could have a, a semi-wall if they're natural. And luckily, this SCV spots the probe, and it came from, you know, a good direction, like a direct direction from top left. So he mo more than likely suspects that, hey, you're top left. I don't think you scouted twice this quickly. And he gets to spot that the probe is going to harass that, that SCV. Now, what's the move from Snow? Because now he knows it's most likely gasless. But in the main of Royal, I didn't actually catch to see his gas timing, but it seems like he put down a somewhat later gas now that he's been spotted. So it is something like a 13 gas from him. No longer going to be gasless because he doesn't want to get gas stolen. There's that depot that I was talking about. And Snow confirmed that it is 
a gas follow up. Is this probe gonna kill it? Is he gonna kill that SCV? He might, <laughs> at least at least not just yet though. Okay, probe does manage to dart away, and we do have the zealot pressure. Zealot pressure is really what you want to do versus what you were anticipating to be a gasless opener. It really puts on a lot of pressure. It's hard to micro, it delays the command center. But because this is more of a hybrid build, this shouldn't do much damage. Now, I got my eye on that probe at mid right. Is he going to be up to no good? Is he going to be proxying some gates or something? There's some type of tech going to be going down here. The cybernetics is almost done. This could be DT. Now, the SCV is going to come in. And we're at a level of play where Royal's going to know, like, hey, dude, where's your third pylon? Where is that? Why is that probe not with your zealot anymore? Okay, but actually, the SCV doesn't get in. So for now, he has no idea, and it is going to be Citadel. Now, this is going to be really hard to stop. you got to remember, his factory is a little later, so mine's going to be a little later. There's the SimCity that I was talking about. Now, it is zealot tight, but not... Actually, I think it is a a marine tight also at the command center. And the zealot is going to get shut down. But there's another one coming, and this is all a distraction. This is just trying to buy time. Now, that second Zealot... Okay, I thought that was a, 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 another Zealot coming also. But it is just a goon. Not only is it a, a proxy tech, it's also a proxy gateway. And the SCV! Oh my gosh, he spots it! Well, this is a disaster opener now for Snow. This is going to be an instant eBay. You can see it just went down in, in Royal's main. Now, we've got a run, bo run by... Snow, he's been channeling his inner, inner Ghost of Dark right here, trying to get by that command center. He does get behind the command center and past the bunker. SCVs come in at a really good time, though. I think he'll, he should be able to limit the amount of damage. But it's still just super annoying. The goon on the ramp, man. Okay. So those Marines are not going to be very effective versus that. There's no add-on. Dude, he has no add-on. He didn't have a vulture building at that time either. This is insane damage. SCV control is really good though. He's limiting the amount of damage, but if we look at the worker count, it's 23 to 25. I realize that Royal, of course, still has command center. I heard the goon die. The turret is being built and he desperately needs to get it up because it's proc. Oh, he kills it. If the DT comes out right now, he might be able to waltz right in there. I don't see it out just yet, though. This is so close. This is so close. Now, what Snow could do is he could run the goon down, soak up the hits with the goon, and run the DT in. The DT has run in, and it did not take much damage. Oh, no. You can't let, you can't let him in. You can't let him in. He can't get in. Oh, he gets one-shotted. He got one shot by the DT, and the DT, he's still in vision, but not anymore. And we've got a DT in the main. Goon, there's no turret. This is most likely over, man. No detection, no academy. No. I don't think I've seen a one base DT in a very long time from a pro player, but this was the perfect game to do it. He's rallying continuous DTs. The natural turret is going to die. Or could die. Instead, he just runs into the main again. He's like, F that. Okay. Royal taps out. And that was a quick game. Snow's going to go up 1-0 in a fashion that I was not expecting to see. So well done to him. Um, I feel like I've seen a lot of those types of games in BSL, but haven't seen that type of play in the Pro League. And Royal, after that game, that's one of those games where you're scratching your head, you know, you're pulling your hair out like, oh my gosh, how did I lose to that? And it's a frustrating way to lose. So, unfortunately... Polypoid, which I feel like is a really good Terran map, just immediately goes over to Snow. And now we're going into Snow's map pick, which is Jungle Story. Now, surprisingly, I think Jungle Story feels like a royal map. I could be wrong, though. I wouldn't take it uh, too badly. But, man, Snow, uh, he's pulling out all the stops today. So let's get into game two and see if he's got some more shenanigans planned. <laughs> Okay, in the bottom right, 
we do have Royal. And in the bottom left, we've got Snow. So again, we've got horizontal spawns, close position. And thinking back again to the SOC games, we did see Gasless expand here. I think in the Barracks versus Mini series, Barracks, well, he attempted to go for a Gasless expand, if I remember correctly. So if I was Snow here, I think Forward Gate could be a good option if these Terran players are going to consistently go for what you anticipate to be a gasless opener. Forward Gate's really good versus that. It's, you know, it doesn't put you all in or anything. It's just a pressure build. And you're not really going to get punished for it. And because of that, I think that's what we're seeing right here. We've got the pylon on the high ground. This could also be 12 Nexus. I think it's kind of 50-50 in both of those options. We'll see what Snow wants to opt for, though. Cruiser had just mentioned to me that actually a lot of Terran, these, Terran players these days have been changing their playstyle to counter Snow, which is hilarious to me because I don't think Snow really plays a style that you can counter. Like, I think he just has his re his standard Reaver opener. He plays it and then makes an evaluation on whether he can go carriers or not. Like, it's not like Stork where he goes Reaver and then you know 100% of the time it's carriers, right? It's more like, okay, if I get ahead, if you try and Vulture Harass and it does no damage, I'm going carriers. If he can. So I don't know exactly how pros are going to be countering Snow because snow seems uncounterable, but we'll see if Royal can do it here. It is a gasless expand, or it was an attempted gasless expand. And again, because he got scouted quickly, he puts, that, puts down gas in response. Imagine we could see potentially initially the same opener rallied one or two zealots with the goon, but I don't think we're gonna see Foxy DT attack again. That probe, look at it, man. He's already killed like 30 health of the of the SCV, and that's the second SCV. The other one also lost a ton of health. So just a major annoyance here, being as annoying as possible, and it really does delay Royal's factory timing. And Royal is someone that really does a good job of getting his factory down ASAP. Like He's like someone like Rush, who consistently has 230 factories, you know, maybe even faster, but this was a 243 factory. But this is really late in comparison. Now there's that Zealot as expected, and again the probe is off in no man's land. Are we really going to be going for more uh, tech play? Like proxy tech? But man, put down that citadel. Okay, what are we doing up here? <laughs> okay, could this be the legendary proxy robo? Could this be it? No, actually, I've been playing a little bit these days, and I, I had thought to myself, like, you know, one of the reasons that it's hard to make one base play work for Protoss is because Terran knows when they're getting one base, it's basically 99% of the time DT, right? So I was thinking to myself, I would like to see more players go for Proxy Robo, you know, rush out a Reaver. And the thing is, is after I... Uh, you know, just thought that to myself one of these days. I actually hit it like three times on the ladder, and it's just so slow. It's, it's no shocker to me that actually Proxy Robo is not a thing after playing against it three times. But Snow's gonna try it, and that SCV did spot, first off, there's no Nexus, and he got an SCV kill. So I'm sure he's wondering what the hell's going on. What were you doing where you didn't um, save that probe? And he is looking for it, man. And that vulture, he's going, or he was going the right direction. But it looks like he's not going to find it. Now, actually, this is a lot of marines and a lot of vultures. Two vultures, what was it, six or seven marines? Can actually do a lot of damage. If I was royal here and saw that this guy still only has one goon, I'd be thinking, what the hell's going on, man? It's 4.30 into the game. Where's your, where's your stuff? Now he sees the second goon, but really, it's kind of late. Vulture gets into the main may be able to kill one or two probes and he does spot that still there's no nexus now if you listen to my bsl cast because we see more cheese in bsl as compared compared to pro games i am a big i made statements like 
if you don't see a Nexus at four minutes, you're getting all in. And well, he didn't see a Nexus at 4.30, so he knows he's getting all in. He also saw one gate. So it can only be one or two things. It's either DT or it's Proxy Reaver. There is the support bay, so it is gonna be Proxy Reaver. And surprisingly, what shuts down Reaver is the same thing as what's, what shuts down DT. Turrets and mines. You don't need a lot of tanks, actually. You just need mines. Because if the Reaver can't unload, you can, uh, you know, buy time to get more tanks out and get more Marines out. The Goons are gonna try and pressure this bunker. Wow, he loses a Goon. At this point, because the DT is not here, he should know that it's Proxy Reaver. Uh, in Royal's main, wow, he actually rushed Siege Mode. Okay. So I guess he's gone Siege Mode first. Then maybe gonna go for mines. Like I'm saying, mines are still really good. You really want to get them. But this proxy reaver, man, it's really slow. Like you can have almost a reaver out at I think 6:30 when you've gone for a fast nexus, and this is coming out at 6:15. So it's only about 15 seconds faster than normal. Now look at this cute move. I'm gonna take the high ground base with this probe. That is definitely an Iokan base if I've ever seen one. And there are the two tanks. Still no vulture with mines. I'm a little surprised at that because mines really do can really can do a lot of damage. But with the siege, he'll still be fine regardless. I can't imagine this drop doing much damage. But it is snow in control of the reaver, and we know he can make magic happen with the with the reaver. Good micro backwards to limit the damage. Now, something that I do have to point out is that worker count, dude. Because he's gone for such a late nexus and hasn't really done any damage to the SCV line, he is already down seven workers. And in response, he's actually double expanding. It's not on the high ground at mid-right that, that I thought. Okay, Reaver goon combo. This is a smart move. He's gonna take down the tank with his goon. He's gonna knock down the bunker. Maybe it's not as smart as I thought, but it does do a decent amount of damage. What's surprising, or what's funny though, is Royal doesn't even want these Marines, so it just frees up supply. However, okay, it's the turret. It can start getting dangerous now. All the Marines are dead. No turret. He does have four tanks, though. I don't think you can really do... Really? There's no... There's not enough range there? The turret... Oh my gosh. Okay, so the Reaver's gonna unload again. Oh, it actually exploded. I can't believe it exploded. It gets a couple more SCVs. So now that worker count, now it's just down to five. He's, he's I, Did he kill a tank? I think he did kill a tank. He's killed two tanks. He did lose his goon, but nah, that was definitely worthwhile. Now we've got Snow with supply lead. He's still down five workers, but with double, double Nexus. Oh, and he's just gonna come drop the natural again. Tank's gonna die. And this is what I was talking about. The master, he's gonna shut down this base. This is two goons, one reefer at 8.30 into the game, and Royal is struggling to deal with it. And behind this, Snow's going to have massive econ coming in. Because he's gone for the double expand, he's almost even in worker count now. Royal's econ has been devastated. Also, his SCVs have been misplaced, like he's got four on gas as natural. He's got a Wraith, which is not exactly the type of unit you want scaling into the mid game. And he has no pressure on the map. He has no idea what Snow's doing. I did see in Royal's main, we've got double factory. We've got the starport coming down. Like I was saying, Royal really well known for hara his, his harassment. And this is a map where drops could be good. So it's not really a shocker to me to see the starport and probably the drop coming out in just a second. Reaver gets another connection there, is gonna kill that vulture. And we have a random Reaver at top middle for some reason. The shuttle does get taken down, but he will be able to retreat it away, or retreat the Reaver away, I mean. Royal is actually building more Marines. You know, if this was earlier in the game, I'd be thinking that this is going to be for an FD, but no, it is just to have an additional bunker to help support incoming bus. So, a, a big commitment to just help defend the early stages, 100 minerals for a bunker, Three marines that's 150 more minerals so 250 more minerals which could have been going into a factory you know, could have been used to scale into your uh, factory count or upgrades or you know another army or something 
And instead, he's just obligated to sit here. The Reavers are going to make sure that, hey, you're not going anywhere, man. Not for a while. And there's that drop that I was talking about. And right now, oh, look at the timing. Cannon comes up right in the nick of time. A little unlucky for a Royal there. Now, what does he do to get back into this game? I'm looking at supplies. Despite all that damage, he's even in supply, which is shocking. Absolutely shocking. So maybe he's not as far as behind as I thought. And now, getting into the third base, this is one way to get back into it. He knocks down a handful of probes. What's that? Five, six, maybe? Seven? Okay, that was great damage. Really good damage. And in Snow's main... I see a block of stuff. I think those are three more gates at the top side of his base. I don't think that's like triple star gate as a follow-up. Seems like we are going to be going into most likely gateway man with storm. I don't think he can get arbiters up in time in response to this incoming five fact. Here comes that reaver again. Going to try and be annoying. Double reaver. Great tank is going to push it away, but it is a nuisance to deal with. how he's focusing the factory like the reavers can deal a lot of damage real quick he could have gotten off two more volleys each from that reaver maybe he could have forced the cancel but it still does keep royal back i think that is a command center don't yeah that's a that's a command center it doesn't look like a science facility or didn't look like a science facility i mean and actually despite the early game royal still in it he's got a science facility coming up second armory was coming in so he's gonna be scaling into his 2-1 snow's not gone ballistic in terms of expansions he's just now building his fourth base good are gonna try and trail these vultures catch them oh uh, vultures still get into top left but there's no probes here so okay that was a good mind connection but this isn't gonna do much damage so actually just looking at supply i'm a little bit worried about Snow's come. He's gonna lose his reburn shuttle, maybe? Oh, he saves the shuttle! No, he doesn't. He loses the shuttle and the reverse, so that was a big loss there. And Royal actually has supply lead, but what I was gonna say is I am a little worried. What looked like good early game, now all of a sudden, with five facts, with the third command center coming up, and Snow not having massive econ and not heavy, like uh, high tier tech, I'm worried that we're gonna have Gateway Man facing off versus 2-1 and everybody knows 2-1 is really strong for Terran also with it being jungle story look at that third or look at that mineral only it's right next to your natural so he could potentially go from two base into third base fourth base instantly and still snow is not going to have you know big econ really not going to still still not going to have you know carriers or arbiter so I am a little worried in that sense that no, it seems like to me he's getting slowly and slowly behind here. I also think he only has eight gates in his main, if I'm looking at this correctly. Okay, now he's starting to build up some more. So it's like nine gateways, or ten gateways, I guess. He also has that additional one that is natural. Oh, actually, that command center was for the mineral only. I thought it was going to be for his island base. Okay, so not going to have four bases ASAP like I thought. But that dropship does finally spot that robo. Not going to be able to shut it down, though. It's in a kind of a weird, awkward position. The dropship did get spotted, so you can see that Snow's moved up into the top side to try and intercept. But it does seem like Ro may be able to avoid it. Vultures move out. He's going to try and set up for the fantasy, fantasy drop here. Oh, the dropship intercepted and killed. And that, that was most likely two tanks in there. I would say that... He does even out the score a little bit by killing off a couple of goons and a couple of zealots, but that was a really good catch from Snow. He definitely needed that. Now, Snow saw all the vultures also move out, so he knows there's a lot of stuff out of position. I wonder if he'll actually try and bust this mineral only, but it doesn't seem like it. I think these vultures are kind of stuck, actually. I think the shuttle's coming back with a reaver. He needs to try and just go in here and kill as much stuff as he possibly can because these are not going to escape. Yep, there's the Reaver. The Reaver is going to blow these things up real quick. There goes half of the vultures. Two shots and half of them are gone. It's a good defense from Snow. Still, 
It does seem like it is still uh, Gateway Man, but that type of trade was really good for Snow. He traded basically no supply for 10 Vultures, and you can see he has now shot up to a 30 supply lead. There's the fourth command center. It does seem like Royal it wants to take the middle. He's going to play it more like Fighting Spirit in that sense. Uh, and, and like Retro. You know, actually we see it in Retro a decent amount of time where Terran just takes the center. And if he can secure the center, he has an easy way to push into the mineral only of snow. So this could be a wise move. Also has double gas, which I just now am realizing. So he definitely wants to get that. He would be able to pump out so many tanks. In Royal's main, I think he's got something like eight factories, double add-on. So if he could put on two more add-ons, he, he could be able to pump out four more tank or four tanks at a time, which is huge for him. Now we are 15 minutes into the game. 2-1 should be done. It is done, and we do have the move out. Here we go. Now what is Snow gonna do? Because his army doesn't look that strong. He is up 20 supply. Where is the supply in those mine hits? Holy guacamole, he kills six goons immediately. There's no Storm, there's no Arbiter, there's no Carriers, he has the Reaver, but trying to use a Reaver 16, 17 minutes into the game, that's really hard to do. It looks like Royal has at least stopped for now his upgrade, so 3-2 is not on the way unless I read that incorrectly. So if Snow can stall the game, at least 3-2 will be delayed. But this is just such a massive push. This is going to be so hard. Also, also, since it being like Fighting Spirit, there is buildable terrain in the middle of the map. And here we go. No. Okay, he does have a... He has one Templar. I don't know if that's enough. We've got basically both players with maxed out armies. But there's just a real lack of AoE for, for Snow. I, I don't remember him rushing upgrades either. So I don't even think he has... You know, strong upgrades. Maybe maybe he has plus two weapon. Man, Terran has just a stranglehold over the center. And the race are still alive, actually. Okay, we are gonna have an engagement here. There's not that many mines set up, so he will pick off a couple of tanks. But look at how fast those zealots just get melted. The storms are pretty good, but they don't really hit a huge chunk of tanks. Yes, he killed five tanks there. But look, he traded like 20 zealots for that. Man, this is a killer army from Royal. And he does have the vessels out, so he's going to have EMP to try and shut down those Templars as they unload. Royal is also someone that does a really good job to use D-Matrix. And just what do you do at this point as Protoss? Where do you attack? Like, you can't counterattack. It's not Polypoid or Retro where you have you know, pathways to run around. He's he's obligated to take an engagement in the center at this point. Good pickoffs there to snipe the Templar. This army, again, is still just not that big. Vessel doesn't have energy for Key Matrix. Looks like it does. And he will save that tank for now. More storms coming down, so it will eventually kill it. But he's trading a lot of stuff to get those two tanks. He is at least preventing this base from being mined. Like, there's a lot of SCVs there. Wow, that's more shuttles than I was anticipating. And we do have a lot of gateways at this point. What is it, like 15 gates in total? He's got four at top left, around maybe 11 or 12 at bottom left. So a lot of production available to Snow. But can he ever actually break this? Now, that can be annoying. Storming over the ledge, he gets a couple more SCVs. But Royal slowly but surely has now secured this base. I don't, I, I don't see how you can attack into this. I really don't. Okay, and the vultures are moving out of position and they've been spotted because he wants to shut down top right, but he's not able to take uh, advantage of that. More storms going down. Okay, gets two more tanks. That's nice. Royal still not able to use that additional gas, which is what makes this base really strong. And that reaver's like, dude, don't even try it. Don't even try and face an off versus me as a vulture. And here we go. Shuttle gonna unload. More Templars. Another good storm. A lot of zealots on the bottom. And the vultures were out of position. It was basically isolated tanks. But still, the tanks are able to do a lot of work. Supplies have shot down considerably for Royal, though. He's now at 135. Protoss at consistently around 170. Protoss also has good, good probe count. Like, he has really big econ. 
he's now starting to take the island base at bottom left. So he's going to have another base coming up. And he's taking the natural at top left. Again, vultures are going to shut down top right. Uh, but again, that's supply that's not in the center. And Snow, he knows that, hey man, you've got to have stuff here. You need more vulture support. More storms going to shut down. More tanks. The, the storm has been really good. And Snow, can he do it here? There's one tank. Five vultures remaining. Just a couple of vessels. Okay, there's tanks on the top side. But really, not that many. I think if Snow can get one more remax to 200 and go while these vultures are out of position, maybe he can actually bust this down. Yeah, he needs to get all of his army together. 3-2 did just now kick in for Terran, which is obviously a massive power spike for him. The third base, the mineral only, is completely gone in just a moment for Snow. So he does need to shuttle over some probes there to that island that he just took. More mines being set up. This is really what you got to do at this point as Terran. You just got to lay mines everywhere and hope that you can get some good connection. Snow's about to have three quarters of the map though. Like, that is just so many bases. And here we go. This is what, round four now? Shuttle coming in. Zealot unload. Templar unload. Okay. Not the greatest storm there. And this time around, actually, uh, Royal didn't seem to lose much there. Supply still hovering around 150. But Snow, he's basically maxed at this point. Top right did get denied, but he doesn't know that the island base has been taken at top right. But I don't think there's any probes there. Archon. Okay. Yeah, that Archon did not last very long. See you later, dude. But at this point, I, I don't think it really matters that much anymore. Um, Snow can just throw units non-stop because Royal's down to two base mining. Almost one and a half base mining. Okay, now that's that's a big shot right there. Really good connection with the tank. But the, the problem for, for Royal is where do you expand? Like, he can't take top right. There's reverse there. He obviously can't take top left because, first off, Snow has it. And it doesn't seem like Royal has remembered that, hey, there's an island base at bottom middle. So he's about to be mined out on his mineral only. He's going to be mining on basically one base in the center. He's got a stranglehold over the center. Like, let's be real here. Like, this is pretty much an unbreakable position. But he's going to run out of money at some point. And that is so much Protoss, but that is so many mines! Jeez, there are so many mines, and those are just gonna trade so well. Like, one, like, think about what that army was. It was one tank, five Goliaths, and just a billion mines and vultures. And he killed a decent chunk of the Protoss army, but still, Protoss ends up denying that command center. And again, Royal, he's desperate for money at this point. I think he needs to move more stuff to the right side or top right side so that he can start taking that base. And because he's so desperate for money, he's actually floated his command center over. He can't even afford to build an additional command center. We do have another engagement. Again, the mines and the storms doing really good damage for both sides. Okay, actually, is Ro just going to try and push this mineral only? This, this seems like a Hail Mary type of play. He is still basically maxed. We've got 175 versus 190. More storms going down. But there's a billion tanks here, and Royal has done a really good job to consistently repair these tanks over and over. Slowly but surely, he's creeping towards that mineral only. Can he knock this down is the question. Oh man, goodbye Templars, goodbye Goons. Another storm goes down, but an instant D-Matrix on the tank, so that gets saved. He does lose, uh, you know, a handful of SCVs, but at this point, being on just two base mining, he doesn't really need that many SCVs. And Royal, he's he's here, dude. He's on the mineral only. He's got a billion V Matrix. This is this base is going to be lost, I think. I don't think this is enough stuff for Protoss. The storms are good, but the Vulture control backwards and the nonstop V Matrix is really buying a lot of time and soaking up a lot of hits for Royal. Another good storm. More tanks falling. But look at the supplies. It's even at this point. 170 to 170. Vultures are just going to run in here. Okay, did he overstep? He's going to lose the vessels and he's going to lose a lot of, of vultures. 
In this one Reaver, how many kills does it have? Six kills, okay. He probably killed an SCV transfer, so that's nice. More Ultras can be trying to be sent up there. These goons are just holding the line, man. The snow, he's still mining there for now. He's not abandoned it just yet. That command center is gonna be lifted, okay. More stuff from snow. More mines being set up. I think actually snow needs to fight here. He does not want to lose this and then lose his natural. So he is gonna try and fight it. The Templar got instantly picked off, so now it's just Zealot Goon versus Tank Vulture, and everybody knows how that should go. There are no D no vessels here though, so no D Matrix. Tank count actually got reset a decent amount, but the goon count obviously got reset massively. But finally, look at the supply. It's 195 to 140, so a big reset to Royal right now. Looks like he's finally running out of steam, finally running out of money. This command center is still floated, still hasn't landed. This base will die. But Snow, he's still got top left, the main and the natural. He's got the island bases at mid right and mid left. So he's still on four base mining. He's got a bank. He's got a gas bank also. He could start taking top middle if he wants. So he's fine. Now, he does need to get his army. Yeah. Okay, now he sends his army from top left towards the center. And finally, Royal is going to back off and get this mineral only base. These two Reavers, they're gonna hold the line here. Again, the Vulture's out of position, but look how many Zealots die, despite the Vulture's being out of position. They just ran into their death. Snow did a good job with his macro. He's still basically permamax, but uh, the goons are gonna push through. He does reset the tanks again, and he does push back Royal towards the center once more, but the backbone of Royal tanks the supply count has been reset back to 140. I have five tanks, or he has five tanks left, if I'm counting that correctly. Uh, I guess a little more than five tanks, but not that much more. Now, if he can secure the mineral, uh, the mineral only and the high ground base, I think Royal has a chance here. We've got triple Reaver. Yeah, you're not gonna break that, dude. You're gonna have to actually send some real units AK tanks over here. And look at that. Wraith gets into a sweet spot to shut down that probe line. So what can Snow do at this point? I think because Royal has to make such a commitment to top right to try and shut down those three Reavers, what could be a good move is Snow just goes for a counter straight into the main of Royal. Like go through the bottom side of the map you know, all of the defense is at the top side, and then just try and bully your way into the main and start killing the production. Is that what he's gonna do? Okay, there he goes. We're on the bottom side of the map. Yeah, there's there's just so much stuff at the top right. There's a decent amount of tanks. Zell's doing a good job to clear out the mines. Where's the storm? We need the storm. There's a Templar. Hits a lot of SCVs. Another good storm hits a ton of SCVs. Tanks are trying to save the day. All the all the zealots have been cleared. All the mines have been cleared. Just goons left over. And again, Snow is going to be denied. I would say that was a pretty decent trade, though. But he is going to lose top right. Royal did lose a lot of SCVs. But again, Royal still needs to get another base. He lost a ton of SCVs in the middle, so he's really not mining at this point. Snow has started to take top middle, so he's going to have another island base. Vultures, oh, Vultures and Take actually moving into position to shut down it, right? Did Royal actually come back in this game? Is he actually going to potentially steal this? I realize he's still down 50 supply, but Snow, he's starting to mine out a lot of these bases. He's starting to lose a lot of these bases. we got another shuttle drop. Oh, mineral only. How many SCVs can he get? He's got something like eight so far. Oh. Takes down that turret and going to get another SCV. Well, that's a lot of stuff at the top top side of snow. There is another fearsome army coming. 38 workers for Royal. He is really in the dumps in terms of econ. Zealots clearing out all the mines. Only one tank remaining. And if this command center falls, he's in big time trouble. That's 400 minerals that you cannot afford to rebuild. Shuttle again. 
Nope, it looks like he saved the probes, probably, and it will just transfer them to top middle. And it does seem like maybe finally Snow has done it. That was a really good EMP. Did like hundreds of points of damage there. Gets a bunch of free kills onto those goons and zealots as they retreat. And if we look at the minimap, actually the third base of where the mineral only of Ro is completely mined out right now. He is only mining in the middle. So all of his SUVs are there. If, if Snow can get another good storm drop in the center, he could potentially wipe out every single SUV. But these mines are ridiculous, dude. Like, how does Snow escape this army? Like, everywhere he walks, there is just a million mines all over the map. Another good, another big engagement here. It is, it is crazy how strong Karen is with mines. Another good storm in the center. Hits the tanks. The center is being broken. He need a couple storms. There's so many. Oh, he gets EMP'd. So many SCVs were there. Clutch EMP coming in for Royal. Supplies now 145 to 117. Floated a floated command center towards the top right again. This is a really scrappy game. Not that many probes at mid left. He does, okay, now he's starting to mine top middle. I was wondering why Snow was so low in terms of money. He just needs to start mining. Another good EMP. Look at how fast those those Dragoons die. A good fire, this is crazy defense from Royal. Is he gonna attack? Oh my, he's gonna attack? He might be able to actually knock down this base. He's gonna have to retreat. Another another EMP comes down, but actually not in the nick of time to shut down the storm. But he is on the doorstep of that mineral only again. Now finally we get those storms that I was waiting for. Kills a decent chunk of the SCVs again. Because there's a huge gap in terms of workers, right? Royal down 40 workers. That means that his army count is actually even in supply because those up basically exactly 40 supply. And this mineral only is gone. Mineral only is up and running for Royal, but there is a pesky DT. Will he spot it? Doesn't look like it. I hear scans going off nonstop, but he still is unaware of this DT at the right side. We've got more storm in the center of the map. He's now... Oh, he's got a drop at top middle. Okay. The cannons focus fire the tank, though, and if the tank dies, I don't think the vultures can actually... Oh, maybe they can kill it. But Royal has lost mining in the center. Gonna have to retreat his tanks that were attacking the mineral only. To try and save it. Okay, I think finally, finally Snow has done it. The mineral only has been shut down. The middle has been shut down. We are sub 70 supply for Royal. He's basically not mining at this point. And even though Snow's not mining that effective either, he at least has mid left. Still has the natural at top left. And it seems like he may be able to actually save this base. Oh, yeah, with well, the Ray Raid, 100% saving this base. So that means that we are going to have a 2 0 lead for Snow any moment now. We're just waiting for the GG to come out. There is no hope for Royal anymore. He had really good defense the entire game like even from the beginning it was really impressive the d matrix the non-stop mines in the center really diligent laying the mines getting so good trades because there were lack of observers but in the end the problem was protoss just had like nine bases right like his econ was insane and even though terran is amazingly strong on four base when you're facing off versus nine base protoss you just need a little bit more steam and with this command center falling, this will probably be the GG. No way the tanks can save it. And there it is. GG. Royal pops out. And that means we've got Snow one game away from making it into the next round. Man, Snow is on point today, dude. And he is pulling out a style that I was not expecting to see. Whenever I watch Snow, I expect him to do more management style. Goon control in the early game. Take bases. Use the Reaver to control the mid game take bases, and then go carriers or arbors as a follow-up. But he's saying, you know what, dude? I know that you're great at harassment also. So instead, 
I'm just going to bring it to you, make you uh, react to me, have your build just completely ruined from the early stages. And so far, it's been working out quite well. So let's get into game three and see if Snow can actually finish the job here. Can he take down Royal 3-0 or will Royal start staging the comeback here on Retro? So in the top left, again, the horizontal spawns, we've got Snow. And in the top right, we have Royal. Desperately need a win here, I think. Again, Retro is another good map for Terran. I think also it's especially good for, for Royal since he's good with the drops. Retro has huge mains. So if he can sneak a shuttle or sneak a dropship in there, for sure he can rack up a lot of kills with his vultures. Also, the fantasy drop with the two tanks and vulture combination is also really good on those middle expansions. So I think Royal definitely could strike back in game three. But no, he's on point, man. I'm surprised we haven't seen any carriers, though. He's just so well known for it, you would expect to have seen them by now. This time around, no forward gate. We are just going to have Pylon in the center. And with Royal going for that low ground racks two games in a, in a row and it being punished by early zealots, I wonder if he'll finally say, like, you know what, man? Okay, you got me. I can't gas this anymore. Maybe it's time to actually just go for 12 gas or actually 11 gas because I know Royal does like to go for 11 gas. We don't see the SCV being sent out, so I think that this is going to be most likely Rax in the main. We're just waiting to see what the gas timing is. Royal is someone like Rush, who really is very cognizant of the power of having a super fast factory. And because of that, there it is. There's the 11 gas timing for Royal. This is going to give him an extremely fast vulture, be able to put pressure on the map, you know, go for a counterattack with the vulture, try and sneak in with with it and rack up some probe kills. Also allows them to get mines quicker to set up a potential mine flank as goons retreat back. So I like this opener from Royal quite a lot. And, you know, it doesn't really hurt your econ that much compared to 12 gas. So unfortunately for Royal and Snow, they are going to have a last scout here. And because it was a last scout, I think Snow has opted into not going for the Zealot. No, actually he has gone for the Zealot, it seems like. Just hasn't popped out yet. Probe SCV interception. And there is the depot for the Sin City. This was what, like a 225 factory, so really, really fast. Think about what we saw on Jungle Story last game. It was a 243 factory, so 18 second difference. That is that is massive, to say the least. And this is actually gonna be two Zealot? Opener from Snow. I guess he was expecting Royal to again go for Gasless Expand, but oh, actually, maybe even three Zealots, so he's really putting on the pressure here. But unfortunately for him, he's gonna see the bad news that the factory is basically already done. Bro gets taken out immediately. Love that factory placement. It is so close to the depot that there's not really any way that the Zealot can kill that SCB. Good control for Royal so far, backs up. And with the factory done, this three zealot pressure is pretty much over. Oh, can't get off the last hit, that's a little unlucky. So what's the resp response from Snow going to be? I didn't see another building being built in his main. So it doesn't seem like we're gonna have DT or no weird robo play. Zealot actually managed to hide in the mineral line. Royal thought it would have re retreated, but it actually didn't. So we could have a Zealot flank coming in from the front side and the bottom side. Goon, I think, actually is getting rallied. So Snow is really not respecting that this Vulture could run in. And hello, Zealot's like, what's up, dude? I'm here. There he goes in the main again. Oh, we're going to have a, we're going to have a run by. The Vulture is trying to come back, but it's going to get intercepted by the Zealot and Goon. We've got SCVs being pulled off in the main. The Vulture actually was not able to come back and save or try and help out. The SCV managed to actually escape. Oh my god. This is so annoying! He has to balance 
the Marines at the front. He's got to balance the Marines in the main, which I actually don't think he pulled any Marines. So, run! He's having his econ disrupted massively. The natural's been st been stalled. Those Marines are very low health. He has three, three Marines facing off versus two Zealots, one goon. That vulture's about to get one-shotted by the goon. Shoot it, dude! Shoot it! Tank pops out, so the, the tank popping out will probably save the day. But this was still a lot of damage, a lot of disruption. And behind us, no, he's not actually going for the all-in. He's just going to play normally. He's got a Nexus coming in. Zealots are doing a good job to at least whittle down the Marine count. Oh, if he can kill this SD, that would be very annoying. Not going to risk it. It was a smart move. Is going to back off, just accept that he's done a lot of damage. What's funny is that if he had gone DT, there's no eBay. There's no mines. It would have been game ending again. But this time around, Royal's not going to get punished. It is just uh, second gate, robo follow up. And what do you do if you're in Royal's position right now? I think that building by the factory is actually a second factory. I think that's an eBay. So he's going to try and put on maybe some counter pressure. But with the fact or with the racks floating eh, no it doesn't seem like he's actually gonna put pressure down i thought maybe with the racks landed he could build like you know four more marines and go with something like a three tank push but with the armory coming down it does seem that royal wants to just stall the game out try and camp his way to victory he is only down two workers and supplies are you know pretty even so just like on jungle story he is just going to try and play it out now what he needs to do is he needs to get some type of control of the game with with the mines he needs to you know figure out did this guy double expand how's this guy moving with his shuttle his goons and just lay some mines out on the map somewhere to get some vision and that is an interesting pylon positioning i think it's a little too early to be stargates so i think this was just anticipation of potential drops coming in as I stated before, Royal is definitely somebody that loves drops. So smart move to put those pylons up around the edges of the base. I see at the corner of the base the armory is spinning, so he has not missed this upgrade. He does need to get his gas up and running at the natural pretty soon though. Heavy upgrade style and Heavy upgrade style obviously requires a lot of gas, and we know Royal clearly likes to build a lot of vessels. So he's gonna really need to get his gas up pretty soon. But this is a lot of Dragoons coming out. Is he actually gonna try and bust his way through the bunker? A lot of Terran players skip Siege for a long time. And actually, that was speed on the Vulture. He may not actually even have Siege mode. He doesn't. Six Goons. Oh, he's gonna get one tank and backs off and he picks off the mine. He does take a lot of damage there, but he is... I thought he was gonna escape, but that mine shot did do a lot of damage. Despite um, killing off a tank. Oh, he's gonna lose a lot of goons. He's gonna lose another goon. He hasn't gotten that many tank kills. He's got a lot, a lot of vulture kills for sure. Oh man, this was devastating. Sure, he killed two tanks, a decent amount of vultures, and he forced a, uh, an SCV pull, but he lost like 10 goons for that. I don't know. I don't know if that was worth it. I think the SCV pull may have saved it for, for Snow. Like, uh, if there was no SCV pull, I think that Royal just slams down factories and probably counters counterattacks. Regardless, Snow is going to try and take another base. Third base at mid left, not gonna be another main. It gets instantly spotted though, so he knows that this is the follow up. And it seems like Royal, after killing so many goons, is feeling confident to take a third base himself. Got an SCV over there, but command center is not built just yet. In his main, I'm pretty sure third and fourth factory went down. Don't see a starport. Well, actually, the starport's probably at his natural. It's probably at his expansion. Yeah, it's right there. So, starport coming down. Going to continue into those upgrades. Not going to go for a 1-1 one, one timing or plus 1 timing. And there's the command center. I think this is a smart move. Smart move. He killed 10 goons or so. Didn't lose that much. You'll be feeling pretty confident in your ability to take it. But as I say that, it gets immediately canceled.
We still haven't seen the support or the Reaver play from Snow just yet. I saw the support bay in his main, but no Reaver on the field anywhere. We've got the gas just now coming up, coming in for Snow at the natural. And again, it's mass gates. No Stargate. No Citadel, if I'm seeing this correctly. So could this just be pure on Gateway Man? We got a Forge. One plus one. He has a second Forge at his third base also, so it could be for, uh, you know, heavy upgrade style for Protoss. There's the shuttle that I was waiting for. Most likely Reaver is in there. Because Royal got his third base denied, I actually think in his main he's gone for something like a 7 factory. I think he's felt the pressure that he can't get his third base, so he's going to try and just bully his way towards the natural. Maybe not, though. Just have tanks moving over to mid-right. I don't think you have enough stuff here to take this base. Yep, Shuttle and Goons are going to shut this down. Again, the Goons get a lot of Ultra Kills, so a lot of supply has been lost. Poor Royal going to make his push even weaker. Yeah, it's six factories, so... You know, six factory is a pretty committed playstyle. Like, if it was five fact, I think that this is, that this could be a command center. But because it's a six fact, I think actually what he's going to try and do here is he's going to try and push towards top middle, going to use that as a stepping stone to try and get the natural, and then expand to top middle behind it. We do have a drop at the top of Snow's base. Vultures unload. Tank on the high ground. Hello. There we go. It's a couple of probe kills. It's a Zealot and a Goon also, so already this drop was worth. But it's down the mining for a decent amount of time. Well, Snow's going to have to be careful, because just like last game, despite the damage that he did in the early stages, Royal even. He's got a fearsome army, and that was a lot of tanks. Like, that's actually a ton of tanks. And again, this is a map that has buildable terrain on that particular side of the map, so he can push with turrets. Now, Snow being Snow. Oh, I thought he was going to loop around and go for a counter, but instead, and now he's just now realizing that, hey, this is a formidable army. I've got to actually respect it. Oh, is he just going to go right through the center? Okay, he's got double Reaver here. Good focus fire to deal a decent amount of damage to the Reaver. But those two tanks die. That was really nice. Good control so far from Snow. Maximizing the amount of damage he gets onto these vultures with his goons. And what Snow needs to do is just buy time. The way you build the way you beat six fact pushes is you just beat it by having you know higher gateway count and more money. So that's all he needs to do here is stall, stall stall but unfortunately for him there's a base right here so if, if royal can take this base while having pressure on the natural it could be very hard to deal with okay wraith goes down there's a lack of goliaths here so it's going to be hard to push any further No, doing what, is, what he can to get rid of the mines. If he can get these goons in position to cut off reinforcements, that would be fantastic. But I'm not sure you can actually do that. That would be really tough. Now, Royal, he did, remember, he did hit his starport timing, and we're 14 minutes into the game. But we can see that his upgrades are now starting to kick in. He's got 1-1. One, one. Oh, actually... Did he really just go into plus one armor instead of going into plus two weapon? I don't see a science facility anywhere. So actually, he is just stuck on one one. And he's gonna try and make it work. Here comes a massive push towards the natural. He's gotten onto the low ground. But Snow said, no sir, you're gonna have to stay up there, dude. So it's trying to get in there, trying to get in get some tank kills, and he does. And Whoa, he's just really struggling to get onto the low ground. It's a hard position to come down. It's also, of course, hard for Protoss to engage, right? Because Terran's on high ground. 
But Snow, he's so good with the shuttle. I think he can just keep unloading these Reavers over and over and just pick off the tanks as they try and push. Now that eBay actually being killed off is a huge deal. First off, not being able to build any more turrets. That sucks. And second, lack of vision. Again, Zealots run in, but the Reaver combo just instantly pops it. And he's trading Zealot for tank. The Kronos will take that trade every day of the week. There's the Goliath that we are waiting for. Another tank dies. And now we've got Vulture, Goliath versus Reaver, Goon Zealot. And again, the push is just denied over and over. Snow has four bases, pretty much full saturation now. A lot of SCVs transferred to top middle. I'm not sure exactly what that was for, but I think Royal's at this point getting quite desperate. He needs that command center. Yeah, okay, it's, it's about done. He's gonna float it over. And finally, the Reavers get taken out. So now maybe he can finally continue his push here. Royal is basically mined out in his main though. So that is a factor. He is gonna be on one base mining for a few seconds and then back on the two base mining. But again, he's lacking the powerful plus two upgrades. His supply is still even, which is great. But again, the Reaver comes in. Ooh, he gets, he gets, oh, he didn't get any of the tanks just yet. And he lost both the Reavers. So that was a trade that Royal really needed. A lot of the Zealots die, a lot of the goons die, and look at supplies fall for Snow. Down to 104, that was the move that Royal was waiting for. And now, can he finally breach this natural? There's still a lot of Protoss here, but he has a 15 supply lead. I think now's his moment of opportunity. He needs to get all that stuff over there though. The Vultures run in, they get a couple of kills, but all the all the Vultures dying means that the Zealots are gonna come in as a counterattack. Wipes the tank count again. No sub 100 supply though. Not a lot of goons left over. Zero zealots, zero templars, zero reavers. Has has Royal done it? DT gets off one tank kill. Reaver coming in, but there's no shuttle. Finally, Royal is in a good spot. He's finally gotten the contain up. That is so many tanks. Snipes the Templar. Just needs to build some turrets, and he does. Now, Snow doesn't have any gateways on the bottom left side of the map, so all the production is going to be funneling in here. If Royal can build, like, depots, just complete SimCity this off, I think this could be unbreakable. But Snow, knowing that... Well, I thought he was going to go in there with the shuttle. Here we go. This could be the last stand for Snow. He's got to bust through here. There's not that many vultures supporting it. There's only one vulture. The Zelts are going to run in! There's only tanks! The Reaver is unloading! Oh, the vultures are... The vultures got clogged up on that turret, man, and they're just 10 seconds too late. Six tanks die. And the supplies of Royal get reset. I think now Snow's gonna hold. The Reaver is still alive, and we know what he can do with a single Reaver. It, it is so close. Both players are just streaming in units. The problem is, is there's not an overwhelming tank count anymore. He kills off the mines and the vultures. I actually think Royal should consider backing off. You don't want to bleed off more tanks. Okay, the Reaver unloads, but doesn't get off any damage. Okay, uh, Goon's going to kill off the tanks. Reaver's going to load again. Uh, turrets are still alive, so it keeps the Reaver at bay. But the tanks again, another one falls. Can a mine get any connection off first that Reaver? The answer is no. Snow just relentlessly saving that Reaver over and over and over. You will not die, man. You are the president. All the units are protect protecting that guy. Mm, almost gets that tank. Rogue transfer down the bottom left. Not going to get inter- Oh, it will get intercepted. Maybe. He's going to get a couple kills. Archon. Archon actually really strong in this at this particular situation, but that mine killing two more tanks. Still 105 to 95. Royal has slight supply lead. Okay, Vulture into the third base. It's gonna shut this down, just a single Vulture. It's gonna alleviate some, uh, gonna alleviate some of the macro ability for Snow. 
two reavers still trying to hold the line they're so strong so hard to attack into if royal had that one wraith remaining maybe he could actually bully his way in here Ooh. there's the vessel that we were waiting to see dematrix would be clutch in this situation soak up 250 points of damage that's three reaver shots really slowly creeping are those turrets it seems like both players have toned down the uh, chaoticness and we're just going to have more fortified or more coordinated attacks at this point we've got three goons trying to shut down mid right plus a drop and the drop is there a reaver in here of course there is man when is there not a reaver in snow's shuttle And this base may actually be canceled. Well, the reaver's really low. But it doesn't matter if it's low, man. That's a snow reaver. Unless it's dead, it's going to deal its continuous damage. He gets another Goliath. He gets another SCP. Terran did hit the power spike. He does have 2-1, but he is desperate for cash. Drop. Got killed off, didn't even see that. Guess it shut down the minerals at bottom left. But game has sort of stabilized at this point. Protoss on five base, Terran on four base. We got 133 to 126, lots of mines, good defense everywhere. I guess maybe a little skimpy at mid right, but I think with a rally, he should be able to defend any counterattack there. We haven't seen Snow's main in a long time, but the fact that there's still no Arbiter or, you know, carriers out at this point, it, it, I guess we're still continuously just building out those Templars and Reavers and Gateway Man. Wow. <laughs> those Zealots, they lose their lives, but they were worth, or it was worth, I mean. Another, another good drop. He knocks down a lot of SCVs there. But there's nowhere for Snow to really attack. I don't I don't think he can bust through this area. Okay, as I say that, here he goes. He will trade a handful of zealots for two or three tanks. But he just doesn't have the supply of lead that he did on Jungle Story to try and push through to top middle. So I think he needs to be a little bit careful to not overstep his bounds. With the plus two power spike for Terran, it could easily swing in favor of Royal real fast if there's just one bad engagement for Snow. We are going to have engagement in the center of the map. It's just goons. Tanks and vultures. I think we're going to steamroll this. There's the D-Matrix. He is not afraid of that single Templar. And that army got massacred. But despite it getting massacred, Royal's the one down 40 supply. We've got a counter to top middle again. He knows that all the units are out of position and he's not turning around. So this is it. It's gonna be base trade, trying to tr shut down this base while trying to shut down bottom middle or bottom left, I mean. <clears throat> There's a Reaver though, double Reaver actually. And I don't think this is gonna work for Royal. He loses the, the D Matrix tank. Those tanks are clumped up and goodbye tanks. This is, this is most likely it. I, I don't see how you recover from a position like this. You lost all your tanks. You've lost top middle. Protoss is still on five base mining. There we go. GG comes out from Royal. And that is going to be a three to nothing. I got to say, I did not see that coming. I thought Royal was really strong these days, even though Snow is a beast in PvT. But well done from Snowman. And is this finally the breakout that we've been waiting for from Snow? In ASL, I always have Snow going really deep in it. Like... He's just so good. I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, like, man, who can actually beat this guy? None of the Terrans, that's for sure, because the Terrans are so good. But for whatever reason, he just can't deliver an ASL. But now here in Darkcast TV Star League, he's crushing everybody, man. Like, 3-0 versus Royal, that's no joke. For sure, that's no joke. And if we look at the remaining people in the bracket for him, right, we've got on the bottom side, Light versus Mini. If Light comes out of there... Everybody knows Light is amazing TVP, right? Like, Light is godlike 
in PvP. But Snow, he's equally godlike. Uh, if, if Light comes out of there, I think there's a high chance Snow beats him. And, you know, that puts him into the finals. And if we look at the top side, regardless of who comes out of the top side, I would almost favor Snow versus everybody. I think the only one I would not favor him versus is maybe Soma. Because Soma is really dangerous in ZVP, but this really does look like it could be Snow's tournament. So well done from him. But that is going to be it for us today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and continuing to support the StarCast TV Star League. I'm sure you're wondering why uh, we've, we're going into the bottom side of the bracket first. It is because I'm waiting for a Zerg caster to help me cast Rush versus Soma. So hopefully we can get that done in the next couple of days. And I hope to see you there in the VOD. Thank you so much.